This is Lenovo's brand new LOQ or lock tower. They're actually pretty cheap um, and they're meant to be a little bit low below the Lenovo Legion lineup. They offer it with a 3050, 3060 and they have two different CPU offerings here. So I decided to pick it up. I went with the lowest model and I actually picked it up with the 3050. However, I also have a 3060. So in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the lock or LOQ tower with the 3050, do some upgrades, look at the case and all that. And because I have a 3060, I'm actually gonna pop that in as well and do a comparison between the two different options here. Inside we get a little bit of accessories, a power cable, and then a generic uh, removal mouse. Just a generic keyboard, nothing special. Uh, they're really not that great, but it'll get you running on day one. So you know, you're not gonna get a 3090 in here or anything like that, but this should be fine. It's really not that wide, right? That's the sheet of paper there. You're only slightly, Deeper than a sheet of paper, maybe three inches. So front I.O. looks okay here. We got power button there. Headphone microphone combo jack right there. Uh, we actually get USB-C on the front, which some cases don't have. Dual USB-A. Um, you get your LOQ or lock symbol there. It's kind of like a carbon fiber look to it. I can see through here a bit, so there's definitely airflow going in. It's going to pull kind of, these are slanted. Um, I don't know if you can see light through there. You can maybe see a little bit of light through there ventilation there some cases don't even have that so i guess that's fine you could stick a little fan on there if need be back of the device here you know you get your standard fan uh not overly large or anything like that but fan up there you actually get a vga port this will be the motherboard here vga port uh you get ethernet for USB A, and hdmi that's just a bracket for the uh, graphics card there and then you know we have the graphics card in there so this is a two slot one you could put a bigger one in theory power in so pretty basic to be honest, but there's nothing wrong with basic. Let's have a look at the internals now. So we have the power supply here. The whole unit basically does just come out. So this is just a face plate here on the front. You can see there's just a face plate there. Take out four screws, take out four screws. You can slide the whole thing out. This one just comes with 350 watt. It just has a 13 400 F and the 3050. If you get larger, if you get more powerful ones, it automatically bumps you up to uh, 500 watts. So, you know, you could, it'll come with bigger ones. And again, you could put in a larger one. So this is non-proprietary here. You can see there is room to put a bigger one in here. Just slide that out, put in your bigger power supply. No issues there whatsoever. Interestingly, the NVMe is actually sticking off of the motherboard here. So you can see there's two uh, M.2 style headers there. One header here fits the Wi-Fi, which is interesting, wired up almost like a mobile chip. So it's not integrated into the motherboard with uh, you know a pin at the back or something like that. You actually have these antenna wires, one there, one running up the front. It's fine, kind of like a laptop or something like that. You're still gonna get Wi-Fi. The NVMe that comes with it, you know, it's sticking off the motherboard there, but that's fine. You get a thumb screw type, whatever these are called, the little plastic twist thingies. One fan included on the front. I don't see anything up here. So you only get one fan on the case in the front there, one in the back. The fan on the back is a lot bigger. We'll get to that in a second. But the front one here is a tiny little guy. It will pull in air and it's gonna pull it directly in. That's gonna be sucked up by your GPU and cool your GPU and then I guess just dissipate into the case and hopefully your CPU will pull it up. It comes with a 13400F, um, not the hottest CPU, but it is kind of unfortunate there's not a second fan up there pulling air directly into the CPU. Uh, in the spirit of ripping apart cases, this is kind of their thing. So this bracket just comes out here. And uh, yeah, I guess that just, it's in just little rubber, nice little rubber pads on that to hold the GPU. Um, it's not a very wide case here. So after this here, if I were to pull up this um, this uh, SATA cable here, we're really not gonna have that much space afterwards. You can see that there's very little space in front. So if you leave the little baby fan on there, meaning it's short, which is probably why they put that in and not a bigger one, gives you a little bit more depth there. You have just a little bit more clearance here. So four and a half centimeters on top of this 3060. So our total there, is uh, 10 inches or 26 centimeters. So you can get a 26 centimeters max and your GPU is gonna sit right against the front there. So you'll have to run these cables up here, pull your SATO cables up there. Otherwise you can put in a full size fan there, but you're gonna be limited to a card of this length. So a nice short one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could probably put in you know, a slightly larger card, but you're gonna be limited there in terms of length. Inside here, we have three SATA ports here, so it's not gonna be obscured by the GPU. You can see there, there's three, one hooked up right now. I don't know where that goes, but somewhere in the case, there must be something wired up. It could just go right to here. We'll see in a minute, that just might be you know, wired up or whatever. But in theory, you can hook up three SATA drives. 
flip that around there so we can have a look at this side here now. And you can see here we have a uh, also a small fan, but slightly bigger than that one there. So, you know, this is a pretty small fan too here. This guy here is only uh, yeah, 9 centimeters or so diameter of that actual fan. I don't know. The, the unit itself is 130 millimeters, but the fan itself is only like 9, 90 millimeters. Okay, so that just comes out like that. Pull that up, pull that down. This whole thing slides out here, I guess. It's... Yeah, there we go. So this is a hard drive caddy. Set that back in, so then you have your hard drive up there. Wire your SATA. The SATA is actually right here. Uh, so you have your SATA connector and you have your power here for a SATA drive, so that's fine. Take that out there. Um, yeah, you could put another fan on here. Absolutely, you could. You could actually put a full-size fan on there. You'd have to take this thing out. So you have this, um, I don't know, cable bracket, cable tie thingy, whatever those are called. Take that out and you could put a full-size fan on there, so that's good. 120, mil mil 120 millimeter fan would be fine here too. You would have to take out this, um, I don't know, little plasticky thingy and then you just pull your wires up there. But you could certainly fit a significantly better 120 millimeter fan in there, which I would do, to be honest. Like I said, as it stands right now in terms of airflow, you're gonna have one intake for the entire machine. You're gonna have this tiny little fan pulling in air right now, which will then go into your GPU, which will then dissipate. In theory, your GPU should run relatively cool as a result of pulling in that air from the front there. The issue is then you have to then evacuate that. So that's gonna come out basically here from the sides here into the case. And then there's this like crossbar here. Hopefully there's enough pressure being created by this evacuation fan here or exhaust to then pull the air through this crack here, I guess, because you're gonna have a panel on here. So this little crack here is then gonna pull out the air into here, which then hopefully this top down fan is gonna pull into your CPU and then it's gonna radiate out and there'll be like a little hot zone here, vortex zone, and it'll get sucked out of the thing there. So um, there's the first case fan, you see one header there. And then I do see a second fan down here, aux fan. So that's case fan. Yeah, that's gonna directly interfere with your ability to hook up a fan. For me, if it runs cool, I mean cool, nice, you know, you can put in your hard drive in there and you know, run whatever. I would suspect probably you're gonna to wanna to take that out and be hard drive less, I guess, and put in a fan there. I think that's gonna be the smartest solution, but that's fine. Uh, you can see here the motherboard, there are two RAM slots uh, wired up with one RAM stick. This comes with just an eight gigabyte stick. The CPU height here, you can see, obviously, you could put in a more beefy cooler. Not with this, obviously, right? If this is in here, let's see how much height we have uh, up to the bottom of that. We're looking at mm, nine centimeters, but um, I think it comes out. There's a little bracket here. There we go. So you can take out this here, which to be honest is another thing that's a pain in the butt. Um, leave it in if you want, but I don't know, it's probably better to just take it out, take this thing out. Yeah, it holds your, you know, your cables or whatever, who cares, get that out of there. All right, now we're turning this into a functional case. Okay, and with that crossbar out, I mean, now we're actually, you know, we've got some room in here so you can put in a fan in there. We'll do these upgrades after, but I just want to run the stock as it is and put everything back together, run it completely stock, see how it performs. But with that out now, you know, now you have some actual room here. You could, let's see how much height we have from the bottom of the motherboard. Uh, this is the motherboard itself up to where the uh, case is gonna be touching. So you're looking at um, six inches or 15 centimeters. That's a, the max height you're gonna get in here. That's the width of the device here. So you're not gonna want a cooler bigger than that until you hit the, mat, like the, the wall here. So that's gonna be your height there. In terms of uh, going out from the CPU, uh, you're gonna hit your first stick from the center of the CPU at uh, seven centimeters. Uh, power connector here going into the motherboard is a little weird. It's split. So we have two different, we have two different ports basically that are getting power. So that's the first half off of the uh, power supply. And then the second half is over there. So you are gonna be a bit limited in how you enhance the power supply. That's gonna be one negative here because you're gonna have an eight pin and a 10 pin. Is 
You can see there the front piece. Front piece is pretty straightforward. You can see there, uh, you know, you have your vent in the front there, which again, you can put in a larger one, uh, pull in some more air in here. Uh, that'll be fine. It'll just basically pull through there. You're gonna be able to put, it, put a full size fan up the top there. So you can get two 120 millimeter fans in here. Okay, and here's the sound. I'm just doing some driver updates. See how noisy it is. So very quiet, I mean, it's sitting directly beside me. And I'm running some Cinebench here with the stock cooler, stock cooling solution as well. So I'm running Time Spy here. Um, I'm surprised how quiet it's running. I mean, the CPU isn't gonna be super taxed, but I'm surprised how quiet the GPU is. And here's the noise level while playing Cyberpunk. Been playing for a little while. It's actually pretty quiet, around 40 dB or so. Here's a look at the system here. You can see it's a 13400F. Uh, it looks like, you know, here's the core count here. Uh, the memory, unfortunately, like I said, it only comes with eight gigabytes. Um, it's slow, it's just DDR4, so it's a 3200 megahertz kit. I mean, that makes it easy to upgrade. You can get yourself a cheap, you know, second stick of DDR4 and just slap it in, then you got 16. DDR4, 3200 megahertz, so basically gonna be the same type thing that's in there right now, but it'll take us to dual channel. And just for, you know, speed timings and all that, we'll just take this out and use uh, the same kit for both sticks. Again, this only has two possible. Run it up and you can see there, RAM Excel whatever that is so you know for the average person this is probably all you're going to do you're going to buy this system right here so it appears that there's no xmp on this system so you can see here for example this system this uh, ram here runs at 3200 megahertz but that's xmp speeds so the jdex speed or the base speed of this ram is like 2200 megahertz meaning um you it won't run at 3200 megahertz in this system so you need to make sure that you buy ram that has a jdex speed of 3200 megahertz so the stuff that came with it apparently does um, you know, it does come with 3200 megahertz. So you either can, you know, get a kit that runs at 32 native or just, you know, spec it up from Lenovo, I guess, because that's kind of a pain that you can't just, you know, get this and pop it in and um, Intel XMP will just speed it up to 3200. It's actually very unfortunate, unfortunate. So um, yeah, that's kind of a, that kind of sucks. Okay, and then, uh, you know, once I get this wired in, we'll have air coming directly in the front, directly for the CPU itself. So that should run quite a bit cooler. Okay, and I have installed here a 3060, 12 gigabyte. It's not the same brand, but I just picked this up locally used. Um, I know it works because I use it in my primary desktop. I use it in my primary desktop, so it works fine. But um, yeah, it's, and it's basically the exact same size. So the 3060 model, this is basically what you would get. Um, and you'd still have the ability to put in a bigger front fan if need be. You can see there. Um, but yeah, so I just plugged it in and uh, hopefully that uh, 380 watt power supply is enough to work. I mean, technically if you buy this with the 3060, you're gonna get a 500 watt power supply, so you'll be fine. Um, this should be okay. You know, I don't have a lot plugged in here overall, so I'm just hoping that it's enough to support it. And then we'll do some testing between the two different uh, cards, same GPU, but the two different cards. You can see here that it's running actually slower now that I've put in the two RAM sticks. So we're at 16 gigabytes or so, but it's running only at 2133. So we are gonna have to go in and check the BIOS and just see what's up, make sure it's you know running properly. Uh, but we do have uh, the fan in the front there as well. So let's go back out to BIOS here and uh, see why it's running so slow. Okay, here we are in the BIOS here. Let's uh, see what we got in here. So, da da da. Advanced in here, power off, just this basic kind of stuff. The LED on the front, there's really nothing in there. Um, weirdly, there's like no RAM settings in here, like no memory settings at all. So my assumption here, despite the fact that, you know, I put in more memory, so now we're at, you know, 16 gigabytes, uh, it's not supporting XMP. So it's basically running at the base of the RAM. So this RAM here, I guess, has like a base frequency of whatever, 2200 megahertz and it runs incredibly slow as a result because it's not supporting XMP. So you'd have to get RAM, I guess, that runs at a native 3200 megahertz or something like that. Wi-Fi seems fine here. It's Realtek Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6. So you're gonna get good speeds. 
Um, I didn't have to update any drivers or anything like that. Basically, I just turned on the system and the Wi-Fi was good to go. So that's nice. Good Wi-Fi included here. You can upgrade it down the road. But for now, this is actually good Wi-Fi. And you can see here we have Lenovo Vantage. Um, this is, you know, comes on most Lenovo systems. You can do some very basic stuff. Thermal mode is just, you know, just the Windows mode over here. You can get the same thing. Uh, but there is an important thing here. You can see there's system updates. So you can come in here and do some system updates. You can see here that I did the BIOS update and the audio driver. So you can see here it's on breath mode um, and it's kind of fluctuating. You know, you can kind of tweak that. Sure, quick breath, slow breath. There's not a lot of colors or anything like that, but you can do some you know, there's three basic modes for how it's going to be just the light static. We can see here, we can see here the included drive. It's a, a Samsung drive here. Um, relatively decent drive. It's a Gen, Gen 3 drive. So, you know, you're going to get upper Gen 3 speeds, 3500, 24. It's fine. Um, I mean, I wouldn't upgrade through Lenovo. I'd probably just leave this again for your operating system. You can swap it out later. I mean, you could put on a four terabyte one if you wanted. Okay, now we're going to run some Cinebench, not really for the scores. We know what a 13400F can do. Um, we're just going to check out the uh, temperatures here. That's what I care about here. So um, here's the uh, CPU there. Let's check what we get here. Yep, and so it's interesting because we actually hit a peak faster. We actually did throttle, whereas we didn't before. Um, but it's running cooler, for sure. Um, and as we get a little bit further in, there's a little bit more separation here where, you know, the CPU is going from uh, 75, 76, 77 on the stock system and is dropping down, staying pretty static on, you know, 70, 71 or so on the fan upgraded system. Okay, so let's come over here. Um, we'll just stay exactly as we were, kind of just hang out right here. And, uh, you know, you can see the, the DRAM, we're doing okay. We're at, um, you know, nine, seven gigabytes or so total for the system. Luckily, I don't have a lot of stuff open. If you had stuff open in the background, you would exceed that, but it's okay. But again, we're in single channel. We're not in dual channel or anything like that. Okay, so now we're back in here and I have more RAM to work with. I have uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM to work with. And you can see, you know, the RAM usage has gone up system-wise. It's just not compressing it. Uh, it's running slower, but it's actually not really impacting anything. So we're getting the same average, but it looks like the low has come up by having the, um, you know, the two kits of RAM in there. So Okay, and we'll check the temperatures here. Um, the GPU is actually running a tiny bit warmer, like maybe a degree or two. I think this was 75, 76 before. This was 69 or 70. So we're looking at a degree or two more uh, for temperatures on the GPU. But the CPU, let's see, uh, the CPU is running cooler, I guess, a de couple degrees. So we were at 70-ish um, or so. You know, we're downing a little bit cooler. So it's just a little bit more air running into the system. Um, the thing is, you know, before that most of the air was coming in from the bottom into the GPU, then it was running through the system and cooling the CPU. Again, this 3050 is not super hot in the first place. Um, so, you know, if you had a hotter GPU, it would probably run hotter. But at this point, I mean, it's totally fine. It looks like it does bring down the CPU temperatures just a touch, um, but the GPU temperatures might go up slightly just because, again, we're not pulling in as much air from the bottom. You could put on a bigger fan on the bottom and increase airflow as well that way um, you know get a nice big fan on the bottom pulling air directly into the gpu you can see here that even as i move through the city the first time um, it's way more playable part of it is i mean the 36 is more powerful than a 3050 period it just is a more powerful card considerably more powerful but the the memory band with this better. So with Hogwarts Legacy, I have found that memory band was a major issue. Um, if you have, you know, lower memory bandwidth, the game just plays terribly. And I think it has something to do with, you know, asset streaming. It'll just run really poor. Um, so, you know, this is a case where going from the 3050 to the 3060 makes a considerable difference in performance. I don't even have DLSS on here. Um, you know, a huge jump in performance here, 92 on average, 20s, 20 for the lows. Uh, very, very playable on this chip. But let's throw on a little bit of DLSS because we have it, so why not? We won't need auto. The quality might be enough to just really help with the performance in that stutter. So quality, quality DLSS now, um, same medium setting, 1080p. And uh, you know the, the average has gone up a lot, but uh, let's see if we can keep the lows up. It seems to be performing quite a bit better just with that little bit of DLSS there. Yeah, so you don't really have to throw it on low. I would just throw in a little bit of DLSS. I find that 
what if for whatever reason I mean it's not just the raw processing it just does help quite a bit and uh, you know you're able to maintain around 60 or so on average it's dipping down here and there but you can see that we're the RAM is you know just under four just under eight gigabytes so we're actually able to get by with that right there barely but we're able to and uh, we're at medium 1080p so I mean you can see here we're doing just fine uh, lots of VRAM overhead medium 1080p no scaling or anything like that so you know we can get a benchmark here of this but uh, I mean clearly you're able to play cyberpunk at 1080p on the 3050 no issues we're at uh, 1080p medium again and you can see here once again you know considerable jump no DLSS uh, we're at 100 FPS as the average and the 1% lows are 55 so huge jump in performance you can see the RAM usage has also gone up quite a bit um, we're at 4 for the uh, uh, game and you know we're up quite a bit in the system because just the Windows just is able to do more stuff But um, yeah, you can see here that the performance is considerably higher with the 3060 uh, 12 gigabyte which is to be expected again. We're not hitting any VRAM issues. You know, we're not even close to 8 gigabytes or anything like that But uh, yeah Let's see. Yeah, I mean ultra native 1080p we're still above 60 well above 60 you know 75 so if you're a 1080p gamer, I mean, you can just basically ma max it out and away you go. DLSS might be needed, you know, if you need ray tracing and that, but if you're just playing at 1080p, I mean, we're doing fine here. Why is there nobody? So 1440p medium native works fine. You can actually just play 1440p medium native, no DLSS. So if you have a 1440p screen, you have a you get the 3060 model of this LOQ, you can basically just toss it into medium and away you go. So, you know, considerable jump in performance. It's like, you know, we know that there's a big jump between the 3050 and the 3060, um, and this has kind of proved it. The fact that, you know, you're paying into a certain cost there, and then it's only a tiny bit more to get into the 3060, and that's such better performance out of the 3060, um, I would definitely buy into the 3060. So let's have a look here. So the Canadian price was a $1044, $799. It's about the same. I think it's a little cheaper in Canada, but it's basically the same. Um, you know, you can always stack coupons. I think I got this for like $900, $950 Canadian tax in. So obviously you can get a better deal. But we'll use the American one just because, you know, other countries and the Americans can convert from that. It's easier. And you can see here, this is the exact model I have right here. 1340, 1300F, 3050. 8 gigabytes of RAM and uh, then you have the 380 watt power supply that's $800 if we go up one tier we just had 70 US dollars and again if we had coupons on top of this this will come down and even the difference between it will be lower same exact CPU we do jump up to that considerably more capable 3060 we double our RAM we don't have to worry about the RAM being JDAC speed of whatever you know 3200 megahertz we just, we're done, basically. And we get a better power supply, which means down the road, you can upgrade even further. Deal. If we go on a little bit further here, you can see that there is a premium model, a Halo model. It's a huge jump in price. So, you know, you go from 870 up to $1,130. That's a huge jump. And the only difference is, you know, same RAM, same GPU, same power supply, just you go from a 13400 to a 13700. Now that is, it is a considerably more powerful CPU, for sure, uh, especially with, you know, if you're doing you know coding or video editing or something like that you you know multi-core you're going to get a better performance out of it but for gaming you're not going to be bottlenecking a 3060 with a 13400f the expense of lq makes no sense whatsoever because you're actually you just buy the legion at that point it's a better item just buy the legion but this mid-range uh lq here i think has a lot of value for a lot of people if you need a pre-build you don't want to spend a ton of money you don't want to get a dell because you want to have some degree of upgradability and modularity this is actually quite compelling for what it is.